Here are three mindset tips that if you implement, you would massively change the results you're getting when it comes to learning to sing. So let's check out this bad boy together. Hey everyone, welcome back to The Singing Simply Show. My name is Ivan. And on this show, we aim to demystify singing, make it as easy, as simple as possible. Because let's face it, learning to sing can often feel quite confusing, right? There's a lot of information, there's a lot of, a lot of content out there and we wanna make it as simple and easy as possible for you. And so for today, I actually wanted to share three simple mindset tips that can help you massively change the results you're getting when it comes to learning to singing. And to be honest, it, it can apply to anything else in life. Today's episode actually came from this idea. You know, I, I've heard this quote before, but I recently came across it again, which is, you know, 80% mindset, 20% strategy. 80% mindset and 20% strategy. And I thought to myself, isn't this really, really true? Because even as a student myself, as a teacher, sharing all this kind of information, I, and I noticed that, you know, it's, it's usually the same kind of information. We might tweak it. We might make it easy for people to understand. We might change the approach of teaching it. But a lot of the strategy is quite the same. You know, get the support, you know, get the right placement, you know, finding shifts in the residence, all, all those kind of concepts. And yes, once in a while, there'll be a little new discovery. But, but what I've found is for most people, what they need is often not the strategy. What they often need help with is the mindset, right? Knowing how to take on the information or what happens when things doesn't go your way. Those things I have found to be much more useful for my clients. And does this mean I don't teach strategy? Not at all. Like I ton teach tons of techniques. Often we'll spend our entire one-on-one -on -one focusing on technique. But, you know, it's also important to not discount the mindset element as well. And the reason why this is important is often when it comes to learning how to sing, right? Yes, we do want to tackle the technique. We do also want to, you know, have the right concepts and ideas. But what's going to make it smooth sailing? What's going to allow you to rise above even when, you know, things aren't going so well is your mindset, how you approach those situations or how you perceive those situations. That's going to be so important. And so for today, let's, let's dive straight into those three mindset tips or three mindset tricks. So tip number one, and maybe this is more of a belief, this is more of something to keep in mind is, the same reason why you will is the same reason why you won't. The same reason why you will is the same reason why you won't. And I actually heard this quote from one of my mentors and uh, it was actually one of our, my business mentors. And I thought this was really, really cool because often in singing and you know to the larger extent life, we often get faced with challenges. We often get faced with situations. And if anything, a lot of us get faced with very similar situations, you know, not having enough time, not having enough money, not, you know, having the talent. But often what separates those who are able to get to what they want and those who can't is how they use those scenarios. And the reason why I know is, you know, if often for a lot of people when it comes to singing lesson, one of the biggest things that hold them back is, you know, I don't have the money, right? I don't have the money. And that's, that's totally valid, totally, totally valid. But I want you to hear me out here because I actually had a student come through who joined my three month program and she, you know, came to this trial lesson. She went to the trial lesson and at the end we were talking about, you know, what, what do I want to do next? What's the next step? And she mentioned, Hey, you know, I actually don't have that much money because I'm a uni student. Maybe for some of you, it's another reason, but she, she was just didn't have that much money. But, you know, here is a cool thing that happened, you know, rather than, you know, what most people might do, which is, ah, uh, I, I have the, I don't have the money. So I can't take the singing lesson. What was really cool about this student of mine, her approach was that she said this, I physically don't have the money right now, but I'm going to make it work, right? I might just need to ask my parents. I might need to work some a bit more. Uh, I might just need to kind of work a bit more of my shift. I might need to just figure out something out. I got to figure something out, but I can make it work. And so how powerful is this? Sometimes we get faced with the same challenge, the same circumstances, but how we choose to react to it, how we choose to use that reason changes the world, changes everything. Because if you can learn to approach everything with a more resourceful, with a more empowering way, right? Same thing with time. But a lot of people go, oh, you know, I, I, I've, got, I've got kids. I've got kids. I've got a job. I've got a job. I've got, you know, all these commitments. I don't have time for it. And whilst I totally get it, it can feel very, very valid, Right. I'm not a parent, but I know how often, you know, commitments can get in the way and just take up so much of your time. But here's the thing. 
it's not an absolute fact because I, I know so many students. I've worked with so many parents, actually. One of my main kind of target markets are parents. And I've seen so many of them make it work. They'll, you know, get the nanny. They'll, they'll organize things with their partner. They'll do all these kind of things to make it work. And so once again, it's, it's not that the reason or that, that you don't have time is that you haven't chosen to make the time. Right, and I want to really drill this in because the same reason why you will is the same reason why you won't. And as long as you can really embrace this concept, no matter what challenge, no matter what hardship comes your way, you can always choose to see it in a slightly different light. You can always choose to work in a way that's more resourceful for you. And this actually ties really well into mindset tip number two. This is more of like a bit of a question, maybe a bit of like a light bulb moment potentially for some of you. And it's this, what if fear you know, what if nerves, what if anxiety, what if those uncomfortable feelings are actually exactly where you need to lean into, right? What I mean by this is, you know, for some of us singing in front of people is scary. Some of us singing in front of people is scary. Some of us singing just, you know, for ourselves can feel very, very scary. But what if instead of using that as a, a reason to not do it, like, oh my gosh, it's so scary, right? What if instead of using that as a reason to not do it, we use it as a reason to go there? And I know this to be true because for some of my clients, right, one of the things we do is an open mic. Every eight, nine weeks, we do an open mic. And, you know, leading up the one or two weeks, people often like, you know, they, they're getting nervous, they, they're getting the fear. And, you know, some of them even want to really back out. They want to back out. They're like, oh my gosh, Ivan, I can't do it. Like, I'm literally going to cry. And I totally get it. It happens once again. It's very, very normal. But here is the interesting thing. The moment they do the open mic, the moment they perform, the moment they, they give their best, all of a sudden after the performance, it becomes one of the coolest things ever. They often come out of the open mic going, this is one of the most transformative events of my life. I feel so different being able to do this. And you might have had an experience similar to this. You're, you're so scared of something. Maybe it was a roller coaster. Maybe it was having that conversation, but then you did it. Remember what that feeling was afterwards? Right? And I really want to draw this home, right? What, what happens if fear was exactly what you needed to lean into? And so this is tip number two. Now, tip number three, my tip, tip number three is what if we could practice normalizing failures? What if instead of, you know, judging ourselves or telling ourselves that we're shit, we're bad, right? Rather than judging those failures or those mistakes every time you crack, every time you sing off pitch, all those things, right? What if we just appreciated them? What if we could just appreciate that they're just a part of the learning process? And it's cliche, it's cliche, but it's true. What if we could appreciate that and not only just that, take on the lesson, right? Every time you mess up, every time you get a good voice crack or every time you don't do as well as you wanted to, what if you just took the lesson from that? Like, what, what, what is that thing I can learn? What is that thing I can do differently next time? What if you took that instead of the blame, instead of the judgment? What if we could do that? And I've seen, and I've seen this time and time again, right? You know, I have a couple of students that, you know, initially when they came into our sessions, every time they cracked, they, you could see them noticeably get frustrated. Like their, their face will literally like, like, you know, tense up, right? And, and then they'll do the rep again and again and again, exactly the same way. And they, they don't really, like, they don't have that breakthrough that they needed. But when you get them to switch out of that frustration, switch out of that, I can't do it, switch out of that, you know, that inability, and you start to get them to tap into, hey, well, what can you try differently? What sensations are you noticing? When you tap into that curiosity and trying to figure out what the lesson is, all of a sudden, they start to get it faster. They start to get it. And you literally see that transform over a lesson. And so this is why I'm important. I really want you guys to be practicing, you know, normalizing failures, right? Failures does not mean that you suck. Failures just mean you need to try it again differently. Failures just mean maybe you need to just get some more feedback. And so I want you to play around these three mindset tips, right? Number one, which is, you know, the same reason why you will is the same reason why you won't. The second one is, you know, what if fear was exactly the thing you needed to lean into? And number three is how do we start practicing normalizing failures? What if failures didn't mean that you suck? It just meant another step forward. And what I'd love to encourage you is, I, I'm a pretty practical guy. I think sharing information is great, but what's gonna really make the difference is taking the action. And so here's a, here's a little exercise for you guys, right? I want you to try this. Hopefully you've taken down some notes by now. If not, just you know rewind it. Choose one of these tips and I would love for you to create 
a very specific action. You know, how can I start to implement this now? You know, maybe one of this is just writing a reminder for yourself. Every time before you practice, you're like, hey, I'm going to just focus on normalizing failures. You can do that. Maybe the second one is, you know, that thing that you're scared of, right? Maybe you're scared of performing in front of people. Maybe you're scared of doing something. Choose a small challenge that's going to inch you towards that. Super, super practical. And so once again, I want you to choose one of these three tips and create a small little baby action that you can go and implement. Because when you do that, action is always going to precede clarity. It's always going to precede clarity. So do that. Now, a key thing to think about is, you know, as you're implementing this, a key question would be, how will I know if it's done? How will I know if I've done it? And so get some evidence, get some kind of evidence. And if you want, send it to me. I can hold you accountable. I'll, I'll drop my contact details into the description below. So uh, apart from that, that does wrap up today's episode. I hope, you know, I hope these mindset tips have brought some value to you. And if you have any questions, if you have any more questions or you're looking to get some more help, right? contact me on Instagram or email. I'm going to drop my contact details once again below and I'd love to hear from you. I'm always looking forward to hear, you know, what you need help with and maybe some ideas for the future. And if you've enjoyed this episode, please leave a review. This is going to just help this show get seen by more people and spread the message, which is you are not your limitations. So apart from that, take care team and I'll see you all for our next episode.